topic of this training session is typical section profiles. We will talk about what typical section profiles are and how they are used in the estimation module of the AstroWare project software. So what is a typical section profile? <coughs> typical section profiles represent a standard design for a typical section of road work. The profiles include detail or pay items that are associated to that type of work. Some examples of profiles that have been created include asphalt overlay, construction concrete, bridge construction, box culvert construction, and guardrail. These profiles are created because the quantities are known and they're based on a linear unit of measure, either by a per foot or per mile. The profiles can use what's called the bid history profile to help determine prices based on previous bid data. These profiles help in developing quick, accurate, long range or scoping type estimates. Here's an example of a cross section of roadway work. This is an asphalt overlay, two inch mill, two inch fill. So as you can see from the cross section, we're going to mill two inches by coal milling class three, and then fill back two inches of asphalted concrete type SLX. The roadway width is 24 feet wide. So based on this information, the standard items or detail items that we would need would be listed here. And then for every mile, um, since this particular typical section profile is based on a per mile unit of measure, these are the quantities for each of the items on per mile unit of measure. One unique functionality of typical section profiles are what are called variables. Variables allow the user to define the values based on the specific requirements for the project. This helps keep the typical section profiles dynamic so that they can be used on a wide variety of projects based on the design requirements necessary for that project. So for an example, on an asphalt profile, the user can modify the roadway width, the depth, the number of lifts and even the milling type. For a bridge profile, the user could change the clear width of the bridge, the deck thickness, the number of girders, and the skew. For a guardrail profile, you could modify the existing surface width, how many end treatments are required, and the offset from the edge of the roadway. So let's take a look at typical section profiles an estimation. So if we take a look here, here's a list of all the typical section profiles that have been created for use in the system. There's several bridge ones, some curb and flume, guardrail, and asphalt ones. So how do we use typical sections an estimation on a cost estimate. Before you get started using typical sections, one thing that you want to verify that you have established if you want to use the bid is the pricing mechanism inside the software is make sure this typical section bid history profile has been filled out. If this is blank like that, if you add a typical section profile to your cost estimate, it won't generate any prices. Even after you've added it, if you come back and add this value in here, it won't recognize the change and all the work that you've done on that typical section profile won't be able to use towards getting prices for it. So it's very important that you make sure this is filled out. As you can see from the list, there's currently four bid history profiles, you can pick the one that's appropriate. In this example, we'll just stick with the default one. So 
if it's not filled out, enter that in there and hit save. So once you verify that there's a typical section profile, click the typical sections quick link at the top of the page. On this overview screen here, it'll show you a list of all the typical section profiles on the cost estimate that you're working on. As you can see, there's currently one in here that I've added previously. To add additional typical section profiles, you can click the component action button here in the blue bar on the right. And there's two, two methods to get typical section profiles in here. This first one, you can copy from an existing cost estimate. So if you've done a very similar project with the same typical sections, you can copy from there. Or the second option here, you copy the reference typical section profiles that we saw earlier. So if you click on that, you'll be presented with this modal window and it lists all those reference typical sections that have been created. This is the pick list, so you just select the ones that you want. You can choose all or one. If you accidentally hit one that you didn't want, just click on it again. The green check mark indicates which ones you've picked. So for this example, let's add another SPR, and we'll say there's a bridge replace one on there as well. So once you've made the appropriate selection, down in the lower right, it will copy to cost estimate. And this will take a copy of those reference typical section profiles and add them to your cost estimate for your use. Once that process has been completed and they've been added to your cost estimate, you'll likely get this little warning box saying that the items aren't priced. This is normal uh, since <clears throat> all the typical section profiles have been set up with quantities of zero. There's no quantity to establish a price against. So you can go ahead and hit the, <clears throat> excuse me, the X on that box and close it. You can see the typical section profile name, description, quantity, how it's measured, and then our total price. There's budget class over here. You can pick one if it's appropriate for your situation or leave it blank. We'll just leave it blank for this example. So let's, to get into the typical section and start working with it, you click the blue hyperlink here on the name. Your documentation will probably direct you to rename it. So for asphalt, It'd be whatever mile marker it runs between. So let's say it's there. So since we have 10 miles, 10 miles here, we'll go ahead and change our typical section quantity to reflect that we're going to do 10 miles of work. Once you've done that, hit save. And then over along the left are your different components of the typical section. We have the general screen that we're on here and then items and variables. So we click on items. This shows all the items that are comprised of performing that type of work. So you can see we have our lime, our asphalted concrete, our binder, tag coat, trench widening if it's applicable, milling, and then our rapid incentives. So to make your typical section profile unique to your specific project, click on the variables tab on the left here. These are all the variables that will influence the quantities on those items. So for our example, we'll say that we're going to mill two inches. We're going to pave back two inches. Our mobilization is 10%. We won't have any trench widening, and our width is going to be 24 feet shown in that cross section. So once you've changed the variables 
as appropriate. Click Save. So as that process was running, it was running regression curve against all the bid data that's available in the system based on the bid history profile selected and is attempting to return a price. So if we navigate to our items here, we'll see that there's no price for mobilization since it's lump sum. Uh, this is a unique situation we'll cover in just a minute here. So if we expand our line, our per unit quantity is almost 1,600. We have 10 miles, so our total quantity is 15,600. So the system determined that our unit price is $1.45, and then our extended amount is almost 23,000. A new feature with typical section profiles is that it has the ability to roll up these quantities over here across multiple typical sections. So if you have roadway widths that vary in width or depth based on the payment determination, uh, you'll likely have multiple typical section profiles with the same items in here. But we don't want different unit prices for each quantity because as the quantity increases, the price will decrease. So we want to generate a price on the total quantity. So how the system handles that is through this rolled up quantity. And what this does is it tells the system to go out and look at all the typical section profiles and look at the items within those profiles. And if they're the same, sum up the quantities and then return the price for it. So if you have certain situations that are unique and you don't want that functionality to occur, just uncheck that box and then you can hit save. We'll leave it checked since we want the system to do that. To get back to your typical section items, you can click the blue quick link up at the top here. I'll close that since I didn't save any changes. So mobilization is a little unique on how we generate our price. Our variable we left at 10% of the total cost up here. So how do we get it to calculate that? Well, you can manually do it, but we've developed a formula for you to use. So if you click those sigma on the right there, and then under predefined formulas, if you put your cursor in there and hit enter, there's a list of predefined formulas that help calculate specific either prices or quantities. You can choose this mobilization typical section. It adds a formula in there and hit save. And as you can see, it generated our price here. We'll go ahead and hit save again. And now we have our 10% in there. So how do we handle our trench widening down here that's not being used in this specific situation? When you go to transition these items to detail items so that they get incorporated in your project, this item that's not being used will get carried along in that process. There's two ways to handle that. We can handle it up front here by clicking this inactive box. This lets the system know that, hey, this item isn't being used at this moment. We don't really care about it. The other way is to leave it checked and have it transition over to detail items, which we'll cover in just a second. And then once it's in that form, you can delete it. We'll go ahead and set it to inactive and show you how the system handles those inactive items. Once you've inactivated it, hit save.
we collapse that box, you can see in the second column here that these items are active, our trench widening is not, and these two are as well. So let's take a look at what typical section profiles we have in here. We have this bridge one and also this other asphalt one that I had previously added. Well, we want our typical, our asphalt typical section items in here, but maybe bridge, we need a little more work on there. So how do we handle that? To transition them to detail items so that they exist in your cost estimate and will be incorporated in your project, you can hit the component actions menu button here. Under task, there's this transition typical sections to detail items. When you click that, you'll be pre presented with this modal window. And again, it's a pick list. So if you don't want the bridge one to come across at this moment, we can just opt not to choose it. We'll pick our two asphalt ones. Once we made the appropriate selection, add the cost estimate. And this takes all the items contained in those profiles that we've picked and transition them to detail items. So now that that process is finished, we'll go take a look at our items on our cost estimate. There's two ways to do that. We can either click the button on the left here, that's cost estimate items, or the quick link at the top, that's item pricing worksheet. So here's all the items that were contained in that in those two typical section profiles along with their quantities. So now that you have detail items, you can start working to combine those. There's a report available that's outlined in documentation that shows you how to run that report that helps sum up the quantities of these like items. And that's how you get your typical section profile items into detail items so that you can use them in your cost estimate and be incorporated in your project. Once they're as a project item, then they can go into a proposal and then the contractor can bid on them. Thank you for joining us today and covering typical section profiles.